Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Rob Patry Live Show. We're coming to you, as you know, from St. Andrews by the Sea. And this was a great weekend here. Paddle Fest. Fantastic weekend, beautiful weather. The, city, the town was packed with people. Lots of things going on. And one of the things that opened up this weekend was Kingsbury Garden. Now, we're going to be talking about Kingsbury Garden a lot this evening. And you know why? Because our special guest is Brad Henderson, Director of Sales there. But not only that, <laughs> he is also the Deputy Mayor of St. Andrews by the Sea. Do you prefer St. Andrews by the Sea or St. Andrews? Well, with the Chamber of Commerce, the branding St. Andrews by the Sea, so our, our, our tourism is branded that way. But uh, as far as Deputy Mayor, it is the town of St. Andrews. Okay, well, how about St. Andy's? Uh, St. Awesome. St. Awesome. I think St. John's trying to use that. St. Incredible, St. Fantastic. It's all good. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me on the show. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about what's been going on in the town what the future holds, what this year is going to be like, Canada 150, yeah. and a lot about Kingsbury Garden. Sounds great. So where do you want to start? Because this is your show. This isn't my okay. show. I am just a servant of the people, if you will. We can start with Kingsbury. How about Let's that? Let's start about that. But it is your show. Your name's behind us. It is. Yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. It is. I didn't even know that. I never knew that. Thank you for pointing that out. So how long have you been with Kingsbury? Uh, for Kingsbury, I've been uh, two and a half years. So uh, for myself, uh, uh, before I was uh, located in Halifax working for Labatt Breweries. And uh, one of my uh, people have different dreams and, and different career goals and aspirations. But one thing that uh, I always wanted to do was uh, have the opportunity to actually live in my hometown, St. Andrews. So uh, when I went off to uh, university, uh, I was fortunate enough to, to get employment directly out of it, uh, and it took me between Fredericton and Halifax, but there was part of me that always just wanted to have an opportunity to uh, return to my hometown, and uh, with Kingsbury Garden and uh, Mrs. Lucinda Flamer, who uh, was the one, the vision behind it and the one that started it, um, I'm fortunate enough where she gave me the opportunity to return and uh, do the sales and marketing at Kingsbury. So you are originally from St. Andrews. I am. So you grew up being aware of Kingsbury. Correct. Uh, so I graduated in 1998, uh, and that would have been the year that I moved away. That that happens to also be the year that Kingsbury opened. So it was very much uh, in grade 11 and 12, something that was being discussed around town. But um, to see the growth of it, I, I always visited Kingsbury, but I never really lived in town while Kingsbury was open. Um, but uh, yeah, so it uh, certainly is a, a wonderful opportunity for me to to return. I, I graduated from Sir James Dunn Academy. Very, always had uh, a little bit of pride in the town that I came from. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful town. A lot of people come here to visit, and uh, they they fall in love with the community. Well, I'm lucky enough to call it call it home. So it's a wonderful opportunity. Well, it is first of all one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful town in Canada, I think. It is just incredible here. Uh, there are so many uh, goings on in the summer. Uh, as I mentioned before, Paddlefest was just on. But I, at the heart of it, at the core of it in many ways, is Kingsbury Garden. Uh, we were lucky enough, my wife and I had our first visit there yesterday, and we were astounded at how large it is, because having not been in there, I didn't realize how big it was. Well, that's it. Uh, that's what kind of makes St. Andrews special, is it is a small community. We have a population of about 1,900. And uh, when you look and you travel and you go to cities and you look for things to do, what makes St. Andrews unique is the fact that it can stack up with any major city as far as attractions. Uh, Kingsbury Garden, obviously, as you mentioned, being one of them, we have a world-class aquarium with the Fundy Discovery Aquarium. Uh, Minister's Island uh, is a wonderful uh, historic attraction that driving across the ocean floor is uh, is obviously something that when people come, they're, they're amazed that you have three major attractions. And then if you get downtown, we have all these whale watching and nature excursions and, and just some amazing little shops that feature local artists. It's it's uh, If you look at how small our town is, we're, we're certainly loaded with things for people to do and see. 
It's almost like there's one attraction for every person that lives here. There That's is. That's how much stuff there is to do. There is, and what's really unique about the town is the fact that you have all these different business owners and, uh, and operators that you could look at each other as competition because you've only got so many visitors and they've only got time for so many things. But uh, the spirit of St. Andrews and uh, especially the Chamber of Commerce and what we do there is everybody works together. We're stronger together. If you were to say, come to St. Andrews to see Kingsbury Garden, a lot of people would do that because they love gardening. But if you said, come to Kingsbury Garden and come to St. Andrews and we have all these other things to do in the community, people are a lot more likely to come here. And that's why we've seen back-to-back -back years of, of record growth in, in tourists coming here. And as you know, Brad, this is a call-in show. So if anybody would like to call in and ask any questions about the garden or about the town of St. Andrews in general or St. Andrews by the Sea in general, I know that Brad will be more than willing and happy to answer. The number is 855-529-8826. So my first question, and we were just getting back to the garden because yep. that's fresh on my mind since we were there yesterday. How big is this place? It's massive. It, it is massive. It's it's 27 acres. Wow. Uh, and uh, it, it is fairly developed. Most of that is, uh, there is a portion that is uh, kind of wood at walking trails to give people that opportunity. One of them's uh, within town, a, a three quarter mile walking trail. So. Uh, certainly unique, but the way that the gardens uh, laid out is it is spread out through themed gardens. So uh, a lot of the inspiration has come from not just gardens within Canada, but internationally. There's a lot of inspiration in the garden from England. Uh, you'll see a lot of that with the Knot Garden, and even uh, not so much even the gardens, but even the cafe building. You probably notice that the even the doorknobs in the the middle of the door versus the side. So um, I'll be honest with you, I've been there two and a half years and every time I walk through the garden, there's something that I just noticed that I've never seen. It's, it's sprinkled with artwork, sculptures, and uh, it's really one of those places that if you spend half a day there and you come literally a month later, the way that things bloom, it looks completely different. So um, that's why we're, we're fortunate enough to have so much community support and, and season memberships. And you're one of our newest uh, season members, so we certainly appreciate that. Well, I'll tell you, Brad, I am so looking forward to it. And both my wife and I, as you pointed out, seeing it season by season, and I'd say, as you said, even week by week. Correct. Um, we walk through there, and I was, I mean, you've got a little labyrinth, you've got dollhouses, uh, incredible, beautiful sculptures. Um, th th there's uh, ponds and fountains and animals. I saw some llamas down there. I believe they were llamas. Alpacas. Yeah. Alpacas. Yeah. Now, what, okay, so what's the difference between a llama and an alpaca? Well, they're, they're different species. Are they? Completely. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. No, okay. <laughs> but they're, in my they're research, in, in my research, I have never seen the difference between a llama and an alpaca. To me, they're the same. They look they're, identical. We, we, have, uh, we have travel writers that come all the time, <laughs> and you, you can tell them alpacas, and when, you're, when you read it in a magazine or something after, they'll they're, say a llama. They do, and they do look very, very, uh, very similar. So in in addition to the alpacas, we uh, also have pygmy goats. So we have uh, two two new babies. Pygmy born. goats. Yeah, they're the miniature ones. They were born uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we have alpa uh, as well peacocks. Um, we have uh, baby rabbits. Uh, we have ducks. And uh, often ducks will be traveling through uh, th through the community and decide that Kingsbury Garden's a lovely spot. As to, a, a, well, why not? It is a, I, if I was a duck, I'd float right down <laughs> and land there and stay there. Now, Brad, we have a call on line one from Shelly. Shelly, are you there with us? I am. Hi, Rob. How you doing? We could just barely hear you. Can you hear me now? No, Patrick, I don't think the speaker's on in here. Here now. Okay, I think okay. we can hear you now, Shelly. There you hey, go. Hey, Rob. Thanks. Thanks so much for taking my call. Hey, oh, Brad. you're more than welcome. Thank you. Do you have a question for Brad this evening? I do have a question, but I did want to say, too, that my family and I are one of those families that came to St. Andrews a few years ago, fell in love, and uh, here we are. We've been here for four years, uh, three years now. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. So my question for Brad is with regards to the Canada 150. You guys had mentioned it already earlier in your intro, and I'm interested to hear what is going on in St. Andrews for Canada 150. So you can let us know. Oh, I can. Uh, so there is a lot of different businesses that are, are doing their own little celebration and events to 
to commemorate it, uh, I can tell you from a town perspective, there's some partnerships that have been in place uh, that do different activities and, and events. Uh, it's the first one that jumps out is there's a, a competition uh, called Fitness by the Sea. And what the challenge is, is that you do 150 walking laps around the loop of the town, the, the plat, or half laps. And at the end of the year, if you get 150 laps in, uh, you're going to actually receive a, a special Canada 150 medal that the mayor will present to you. So, uh, mayor Doug Nash. He, exactly. He's been on your he's show. He's been on our show. So, he, uh, so with this particular program, is, uh, there's also dogs are invited, and dogs will get a special dog tag. So we've seen uh, with this particular uh, uh, activity so far, there's been over 100 people in our community that have started doing the laps around town to get active and it's it's a nice thing to do in the community to get people healthy and I think we've got about 20 dogs so nice. uh, people shake out. The other thing that's going on in the community is more from a marketing perspective so nowadays when when people are visiting uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, they're, they're such vital keys to letting people know about our community so people can now check in to St. Andrews by the Sea through again Facebook, Instagram or Twitter and hashtag Canada 150 by the sea and they're going to get entered automatically in a draw for a chance to win 150 items that are donated by local businesses. Oh, that's fantastic. It what is. a great idea. It is and hopefully people will see that their friends are visiting it, see some great photos and decide to join us because it is the perfect place to, to visit uh, obviously for Canada 150 and uh, it's particular Canada Day. Um, I can tell you that I don't have the details around it but uh, the town has been talking with Luke McDonald who actually was the, is the man behind Paddle Fest yeah. and we're looking to kind of take Canada Day which is already a huge success in the town the town's full but even add on to it a little bit more um, so what they're looking to do is actually have some free outdoor concerts to really elevate the experience uh, and the other thing that I can talk bringing back to Kingsbury Garden is on July 3rd uh, we're fortunate enough um, to have a partnership with the New Brunswick Youth Orchestra and uh, they're coming to town and they've uh, actually had a piece that was commissioned out uh, they had a call for proposals and Howard Shore, who is, uh, he's an Oscar winner. He's known for uh, doing uh, uh, film scores. Uh, Lord, uh, Lord of the Rings would be uh, one that he wrote, as well as The Hobbit. And he is commissioned to do a special Canada 150 song that he is unveiling that weekend. Uh, in, uh, he's, he's having a show in Fredericton, but also in St. Andrews. So that'll be at Kingsbury, at Kingsbury International Residence for the Fantastic. Arts, which is next door. Uh, and uh, Misha Bruger gossman who is a talented singer out of Fredericton, will be with 120 uh, vocal choir singing wow. this song. Uh, in addition to the New Brunswick Youth Orchestra and then out of Venezuela we have a national band coming. There'll be over 300 performers on July 3rd from 6 to 8 p.m. and it's absolutely free for I, the public. I need to write all this stuff down because this is very exciting. This well, is fan big, well, big Well, now news. that you're a member at Kingsbury, you'll be getting our, our, our member newsletter and, wow. uh, and it'll have all the dates for you. So it'll certainly be a great way and that again July 3rd is part of that July 1st weekend in St. Andrews. It's, you couldn't pick a better time to come to St. Andrews than right then. That's great. Shelly, are you still there? Shelly? Are you gone? I think Shelly's the owner of the Terra Manor, which is a great business. Is Shelly gone? She's gone. Okay, well thank you for your call, Shelly, and yes I do know Shelly from the Terra Manor. Mm -hmm. But you know what, I was, I, I, it's too bad she was gone because I had a question for her. I was going to ask her, what's the difference between a, she, an alpaca and a llama? She should call back. She, if, you, if you're watching, uh, well, you know what she's going to do? She'll Google it up. She's five minutes away. I'm she sure, should come join us. I'm sure that she knows that nobody knows the difference between the two. Now, I will say this. I'll give you this much. Um, we were in the gift shop after, and I did notice you had alpaca sweaters and scarves and mittens. But I, and, and I said to Arlene, my <laughs> wife, um, where did that come from if they've got llamas back there? No, oh, yeah, no, they literally, uh, they're <laughs> actually, I think, being sheared this coming <laughs> week. Really? Yeah, so they probably were pretty big, but once they get sheared, they're the, pretty small animals. That's probably where my confusion came in. And uh, it's a great fabric. It's, it's so soft. <laughs> it's soft. And, yeah, and, color, and they're so colorful when they in, infuse it. Now, so they're not indigenous to New Brunswick, are they? No, not at all. Not, no. not, in, not to <laughs> Canada. But um, they, uh, it's one of our best-selling oh, products. You know what? Shelly's back. Shelly, are you there? <laughs> I am. Now, did you, did you hear what I pointed out? Do you know the difference between an alpaca and a llama? Well, I can't say I know the scientific 
specifications, but I believe the uh, a llama is about twice the size of an alpaca. But what what if it was a small llama? A baby llama. <laughs> like yeah, a baby. baby. <laughs> See, you couldn't tell the difference. Why can't you just side with me? All I know is that my favorite scarf is made from alpaca wool. All right. All right. Well, thank you for calling back. I appreciate no problem. it. <laughs> Take care. Have a great evening, and thanks you, for calling. You too. Bye, thank Shelley. You. Bye. Um, so, okay, so there's animal. Just getting back to the garden now. Sure. I, I, I'm just fixated with this. Yep. Um, so I saw a big, giant apple core. Yep. That was, uh, so you're in, by the <laughs> apple orchard. Uh, that was a no, I didn't know that. That's why there's an apple core there. Yeah, so that, that, that's an example of we have a sculpture garden that has 34 pieces in it. That's part of the Canadian sculpture competition. So every two years we've had uh, first place gets $20,000, second place gets fifteen, and we have calls for submissions all across Canada. We had 18 artists from coast to coast send sculptures to us. But that piece is in the apple orchard that you're referring to. And it's a unique piece because it's done by a local artist. His name's uh, Joel Palmer. He goes by the uh, the nickname Swamp Bear is his artist name. Swamp Bears? Swamp, Swamp Bear, yeah. Okay. And what's unique about it is uh, he did that, with the exception of the painting, with a chainsaw. You're kidding. That whole piece was done by chainsaw. It is. Uh, I mean, it really is a beautiful piece. He has, he has a piece in the sculpture garden as well that has some seals. And uh, we had all the students come last year from all over Charlotte County. We let them vote on the sculpture they liked the most. And he actually won the Student Choice Award. Well, you know what? It is something you don't expect to see because you're just walking through there. And then all of a sudden, there's this giant apple core. And I thought, geez, don't you guys ever clean up? But, um, but, <laughs> but the I mean, deer in St. Andrews, we probably need one think, that size, You think right? somebody would yeah. eat one or, or one of the deer. But I thought, you know, that is really different. It's cool and it jumps. And I mean, that's what art is supposed to do. It's supposed to make you think and, and provoke. And uh, we'd be walking around and things would just sort of be there where you wouldn't expect them to be, I'll say. And it was very interesting. It is. Uh, the Kingsbury Garden has had a, a long relationship with, some people say obviously gardening is a form of art, which it really is. Uh, but, but for Kingsbury, there's a lot that goes on with art, in addition to even the sculptures. is We have an artist in residence. Uh, he's with us all summer. He's a, a staff member. His name is Jeff Slater. Uh, Jeff, you would uh, be familiar with, if you drive into St. Andrews, you know, the water tower that's painted. Yes. That was actually Jeff. If you're down by the hardware store, uh, the mural on the side, that's Jeff as well. So wow. He, oh, he, that's gorgeous. He's at I Kingsbury love that. all uh, summer, and uh, he, that print, actually, that, that I handed you, that was done by him oh, through a, okay. a hand-pressed print. But he also does courses there. Uh, one is uh, known as uh, Flower in an Hour. It's closer to 90 minutes because he likes to tell a little bit about the town, uh, but people get step-by-step -step instruction on how to paint their own uh, their own little flower for a little take-home souvenir. Yes. Uh, and the other thing that he does is a course called Pinot and Palette, which is just uh, a two-hour course that you get to learn how to get your step-by-step -step instruction. And I have no talent whatsoever when it comes to art. Right. And it's amazing with his direction what you can do. And why I like that one is it also pairs with wine and cheese. Wine. Yeah. Well, we had uh, we had uh, Stephanie Goff a few weeks ago from um, uh, she heads up fog fest in Campobello and they were doing a sip and paint which I guess yeah. is something like that but I said to her could I just do the sipping and just bypass the painting altogether. Uh, and, and they said, well, you know, you, you could do whatever you want, but if I could join this well, group. We'll have to have you in because it, it, it's like, again, art is not particularly something that I am great at, uh, yeah. um, but uh, it's it's really, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, uh, yeah. It, and, and you'll surprise yourself. Now, you know, I gotta tell you, and, I, and I've said this to many of my guests, and we've sort of alluded to it, well, or I guess we've 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 broached the subject. But you know, I'm from St. Stephen. When I look at St. Stephen, and I look at St. Andrews, and uh, and and uh, Campobello, and Grand Manan, and Deer Island, and St. George, and you know, Charlotte County as a whole, th there's little patches of of small community that have very very, to me, tiny populations. And yet, for these the, these small populations, they do big, big things. Correct. There's so much art. There's so much music. Uh, there's so much pulling together of communities that do things. And like you said, 1,900 people in St. Andrews. Yep. And there's all these incredible things. And I think it's a testament to Charlotte County folks of what they can do, which 
you know, from as somebody that's from Ontario. We're not judging. We're no, not judging. and I know that, and I appreciate that because there's well, no, well, no, nobody judges me <laughs> because you know what? I'm a beloved figure in town, and and St. Andrews has has taken me in and embraced me as has St. Stephen as as a goodwill ambassador. But <laughs> yeah, I'm not just saying it. I'm not pumping your tires, but you're exactly the type of person that we want in the community because you instantly came here and have made an impact like to bring live television you're you're very community minded uh, I, I again i know you're at kingsbury yesterday and i saw on social media you're instantly an ambassador for the garden after seeing it yeah but you know what it's not i you know what and, and I'll, t I'll i'll correct you i'm not an ambassador it's these places are pulling it out of me i mean i go there first well uh, first and foremost Everybody there is just wonderful. The people there, the folks that we met, were just delightful. They, they know the area. They know the gardens. Uh, we met a lovely girl there, and uh, we're asking her questions about the plants, and she answers them. And then we had lunch at the cafe, and uh, Chef Alex Hahn, right? He's coming on the show in a few weeks. Chef, you are amazing. We had this sampler plate. And, I mean, I love food. I don't know how well you know me, but... That's all I think about 24-7. <laughs> you know, the, I'm, while we're talking here and you're talking, I'm not even listening to you. I'm thinking about my next <laughs> meal. And the food at the garden, this little sampler plate, it had four or five different little, I don't even know what you, you know, I'm not you know, little things yep. to eat. And every one of them was a taste explosion. And you're in this beautiful room, it beautifully painted, decorated. There's windows that are looking out onto the garden. There's people sitting outside. There's a guitarist playing music. Yeah, you don't need an ambassador. You, no. you know what? It's I, I, sometimes I think I've died and I've gone to heaven. <laughs> well, I, the, the places around are just, just phenomenal. So okay, now that I, you know what, I've, I've taken up all your oh, time. Oh no! And not no, keep, say, keep keep selling <laughs> it. Keep but you know what? It. We have another call. We've got Rick on line two. Rick, are you there? Uh, yep. Hi, you're live with Rob Patry and with Brad Henderson. You got a question for Brad, I take it. Yes, I do. I'm just curious. Uh, Are you there? Yeah, I'm right here. We haven't, we, I didn't hear that. Th I know you're curious. What are you curious about? Uh, I'm just wondering if, uh, if the town of St. Andrews has any infrastructure uh, project on the horizon. Okay, fair question. Good question. So we're switching, uh, I guess, to, to town. Uh, I will start off by saying that uh, obviously the mayor is the official spokesperson uh, for the town, uh, but uh, I did talk to him and he said, by all means, uh, feel free to answer questions on the town. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, there is some particular infrastructure. So first of all, there's you'll notice that a lot of the roads in town right now are, are getting some work done and actually underneath it, is we're getting uh, water, sewer, wastewater management lines put in. So we're doing a lot of the stuff that, unfortunately, you don't get to put a bow on and uh, and unveil. It's not, I wouldn't say it's uh, uh, probably sexy infrastructure, but uh, it's something that certainly needs to be done. Uh, but as far as specific infrastructure projects, the one that's probably near and dear and close to me is the very building that we're in right now at the WC O'Neill Arena Complex. It's no secret that the arena roof leaks. I'm sure, I don't know if you've had a, rain, a show here with rain yet. No. Oh, uh, well, yeah, you, we have, and it, no, it's been you had to have fine. an umbrella to it, but yeah, no, there, no, everything's good. There, there, there's no question. So the arena roof, uh, it needs to be repaired. It, yeah. it, it needs to be completely redone. And if you look at what this particular building serves the community, a lot of people talk about the great things that happen in the summer, and there is so many. But for the locals that live here year-round, this building, in my opinion, is the heart of the community. Not only is it the CHCO studio, um, we have a theater, which there's actually a film club that enjoys. It is the... Uh, the T uh, town council chambers, uh, figure skating, speed skating, hockey, curling. Uh, there's uh, one of the major employers in the town is actually the contact center that is in this building as well. Uh, and then the visitor information center uh, that we have for all of our guests coming to town. It's our first impression. And then last but not least, it's the emergency response uh, center. So if there's an emergency because of weather, we're sending them right now to this building that has basically in a roof that is expired. So uh, the town is in a position uh, to contribute to getting this problem resolved, but we can't do it alone. We do need 
other you know uh, support from the provincial and federal government and I can tell you that we do have an application in right now and we're just waiting to hear word and I have talked to uh, both Minister Ames and our MP uh, Karen Ludwig and both of them seem supportive of the project as well as their staff so I'm optimistic I think that uh, this uh, building once we get a new re uh, roof on it it can serve this community for another 25 years and the other uh, project that's on our radar is uh, our medical center uh, we are fortunate that we do have one, but in the same sense, it, it is very dated. And one of the things that in rural New Brunswick that people are having, a, communities are having a hard time doing is attracting new doctors. And if you're having a, a community that has a medical center that's outdated, it makes it in rural New Brunswick that much tougher to attract uh, doctors. So uh, we are looking, it's at the early stages, and we do have some partners involved with that. Um, we are looking at potentially um, either renovating the existing medical center or actually constructing a, a brand new one. So that's over the next four years of this council, both of those would be our major infrastructure projects. And those are good ones. I'm going to cut you off here, and I apologize, but we need to take a quick break. Thank you, Rick, for calling in. And we'll be right back with Brad Henderson on Rob Patry Live. Thanks for watching, folks. Da, 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 da. Man, what a great theme song I've got. <laughs> Did you know I wrote that myself? I, I could hear your, yeah, it yeah. sounded sound similar. It, it, oh, yeah. We well, talk about Howard Shore, he should look out with the, yeah, He the should, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're back on with Rob Patry Live and our special guest this evening, Brad Henderson. Hey, we have another call. The phones are ringing off the hook. We've got Hugh on line one. Hugh, are you there? I'm here. How are you this evening, Hugh? Very good. Yourself? Good. I'm very good. Thank you for calling. You have a question for Mr. Henderson. I do. I wanted to ask him um, how his parents were an influence on his upbringing. Huh. Well, there's an interesting question. So that's a good so question. So how, how is, were is, mom and dad? Is that my dad? Is, does, that, does, is this your dad? Is he disguising his voice? No? I don't no. know. Hugh, are you, are you Brad's father? I'm of no relation. Okay. Well, <laughs> fair enough. That's good. Okay. <laughs> Oh. So this is not your father. Were your parents good to you? <laughs> yes, they were. They, they were, were very good to me. Did you yeah. have a good childhood and a good upbringing? I, I would say that if I didn't, I probably wouldn't have came back. So. See, Hugh, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. During the break, and I don't know why this came up, but he was telling me he had a, an ugly childhood. It was a horrible <laughs> upbringing. So I don't wow. know if he's telling the truth now or he was lying before, but... It feels like a Dr. Phil. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Phil, yeah, I don't know. Uh, no, I, I did. That's a, that's a, a fair question because they, they certainly did. I, uh, I, uh, whenever I talk about my parents, I get a little awkward because I try not to get, show emotions and be emotional. But um, Oh, don't they, cry. Yeah, Please yeah, do. Yeah. That, my ratings will go sky high. But uh, if I look at my, my childhood in St. Andrews and, and uh, everything that I was involved with and involved in the community, my parents were involved in the community. They, they certainly... Um, taught me at a very early age that uh, if you care about your community, you should be involved in it. Uh, I think growing up that uh, when I was in Cubs, my dad was the one that was in the middle doing the jumping, Michaela. He was my Cub leader. Um, I remember when high school hockey was in, in town for um, about uh, 20 years, uh, we had to do some fundraising, and my mom actually uh, was the lead person behind actually getting the finances going for the hockey team. So. Uh, they were certainly actively uh, involved in, in both my life and, and a lot of that message of volunteering and being involved in the community, I get simply for them. Uh, the other thing uh, about my parents is my father used to be the, uh, the town manager in St. Andrews. So growing up, uh, town issues were something that he didn't discuss a lot of, but from time to time you are around it and you, you do get an appreciation for it. So um, I certainly probably got a little bit of interest in, in, in the town aspect of things from, from his career. So uh, I'm very fortunate that uh, I have two parents that uh, certainly support me 
Uh, and uh, the other thing is, uh, on my parents' note, is I'm lucky that I have an employer with Mrs. Lucinda Flamer, who uh, my day job, as we're talking about, is at Kingsbury Garden, but uh, my time with the, uh, the town is, uh, it, there is a lot of hours uh, involved with being on town council. And uh, her attitude is, if I'm doing something good for the town, I'm doing something good for the King Kingsbury, and if I'm doing something good for Kingsbury, I'm doing something good for the town. So she uh, certainly has encouraged me as well to get actively involved with the community. And we do fundraisers all the time at the garden, and that's a lot of it's from behind her. So very good question, but my parents certainly are, are probably the, the biggest reason of, of who I am today, like anybody. So uh, I, I had a great childhood, and that's why I love this town so much, and I want my kids. Uh, I have two, two young boys, Hunter and Tristan. Hunter's five, Tristan's two. Uh, I want them to have the same opportunities and the same upbringing that I did because I, uh, I had a great experience in this community growing up. That's fantastic. So does that answer your question, Hugh? He's gone, Hugh's gone. Well, thank you for calling, Hugh, I appreciate that. So let's talk a little bit about Dr. Phil. <laughs> you seem to have an obsession with Dr. <laughs> Phil. Now, the only reason I bring this up was because when I said that uh, I, I put up my promo, as I do every week for my next week's guest, that Brad was coming on. He wrote down a sort of a, a secret phrase that I understood so it was cash me outside. Cash me outside. Now, what's that about? Uh, it's just uh, one of those things, social media, <laughs> that uh, it, it was, uh, a, a, I guess you could say, a guest on Dr. Phil that uh, was on his show. That uh, The young I guess, girl, the young adolescent girl. young girl, that was, girl that was less than flattering, so yeah. I figured, hey. Let's use cash me outside, okay, and he so took it and ran with it. I, I ran with it, <laughs> and I, as I recall, yesterday when we spoke, you said, Rob, if you can do one favor for me, can you do your Dr. Phil impression <laughs> on the show? And I, I said, sure. That. So here it is, Charlotte County for the first time, my Dr. Phil impression. So, what part of no don't you understand? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Well Thank done. You. you know what? We'll edit that right out. Nobody <laughs> will ever see that. Uh, ten second delay. <laughs> ten second delay, yeah. exactly. It's like for, for Don Cherry. Okay, so we've touched upon Kingsbury Garden. We've touched upon your active role as deputy mayor. And like we've had Doug Nation, another fan. You know what? That Doug, fantastic guy. I was, I was a off for a little while in April. He was supposed to come on for a second time. And we're going to have to have him back on again because he's a fabulous spokesman for St. Andrews. Terrific. As are you. He As is. are you. He is. And he certainly, uh, the thing with town council is um, we've been at it for a year now, this, ex this existing council, but four of our members were brand new to the town council experience. So um, the way that he guided us and, and took us through the process and, and helped us, especially early when we first got on town council, uh, we didn't have a, a CAO in place. So we didn't have a town manager. And uh, the way that himself and the staff guided us to get us through those first few months, it was great leadership. And for, for that matter, too, is Councillor Grew uh, and uh, Councillor Bishop, uh, two experienced councillors that sat on the, on the previous council, uh, certainly guided and made it an easy transition. We picked, we've been able to pick up quite a few files that actually were from existing council and we're starting to work through them now and, and try to move those files ahead. So. Um, yeah, he, he is a great leader and a great voice for it, and uh, he's very passionate about the community as well. And you know, I, you've answered another question that it goes back to why do these communities do so much with such a small population, and I think it's great leadership. And the leadership where it really shines, I think, is that all of you care about the community. You're all connected, and as you, when you were talking about Kingsbury, um, and saying, you know, there's everything's interwoven. Business and community are like-minded. When one grows, the other one grows. Exactly. And I think it's that, that caring, that passion that you bring out that Mr. Nash has and that you clearly have yourself, that's why things are going so well. well. I think we have to look at Charlotte County as a whole. If you look at uh, rural anywhere, let alone rural New Brunswick, is there's a perception that it's it's tough times. But if you look at Charlotte County and all the things we have going on, we're St. Andrews alone. We're coming off back to back uh, years of, of tourism where we've we've been seeing record numbers. Like there's momentum in town. People 
are still finding about St. Andrews and we're seeing more and more visitors. And then next door we have St. Stephen and I know you've had uh, some uh, the mayor on from there as well as I think future St. Stephen. Yeah, we've and had uh, Alan McEachern's been on and um, geez, yeah, my mind is gone. Alex Reed was yeah, on. Yeah, and if you look at the things that they have going on in that community. Richard Fulton from, exactly. from future St. Stephen. They've, they've got uh, support around new business. so. Um, we're a place where rural New Brunswick might be struggling. I actually think that Charlotte County is kind of doing its own little thing right now and really starting to thrive and it does come from the people. Like, it is. And speaking of people, we have another people on the line. We have Laura on line too. Are you there, Laura? Hi. Hi, Laura. How are you this evening? Good. How are you? Good. You're calling from Milltown. I am. And what's your question for Brad? I was just wondering how many things he's tried off the menu at Saber in the Garden. <laughs> There's an entry. You know what? I'll tell you. I look at this fellow. I think he's tried them all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I, oh. You know what? I apologize to everybody oh, in Charlotte feelings, County. My feelings are hurt. I apologize to the town of St. Andrews. I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> Go ahead, take, take it away, Brad. Rob, Rob and I have had some fun banter before the show, and uh, he just threw a dagger at me. Uh, Laura, oddly enough, is my brother's fiance, so she's gonna poke at me as well oh. by doing that. But I will say, because it is an opportunity, is you mentioned Chef Alex Hahn, and uh, one thing, again, that makes St. Andrews very unique is if you look at the dining experiences in town, we have the top chefs uh, that can stack up against any community, and Kingsbury Garden with Chef Alex Hond is is no exception. Uh, Alex is a, is a guy that uh, grew up in St. Andrews, loves the town, and he could probably go anywhere he wants, but he chooses to stay in this community because he loves it and he's involved in it as well. Um, when he graduated culinary school, he was on uh, Team Canada, traveling around and representing the best cu cuisine that our country has to to have, and. As a 14-year-old, he actually worked in that kitchen because his father uh, used to run Kingsbury Garden. And Alex, it was one of his first jobs, was actually in that kitchen. And it, he really, one of the things that, uh, when I worked for Labatt, one of the things that people always, uh, kind of a characteristic they were looking for is people that act as owners. And Alex, certainly, and Chef Hahn, acts like it's his business. And it's the same as me, and that's why I think we get along so well. But his... Uh, his talents are, are sensational. So he has two two restaurants within Kingsbury. Uh, one would be Savor in the Garden, which is open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday by reservation. It's it's like a trust the chef experience where you can have anywhere from a six to ten course meal. You submit your dietary restrictions, and what a treat that is to have an experience like that. I, I actually uh, can't compare it to, to really anything. It, it's that's, some, that's something I've got to try, but I want to make sure I go when there's the 10 course meal <laughs> and the only dietary re restriction I have is plenty of food. Please keep it coming. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're here with Brad Henderson on Rob Patry Live. We'll be right back. This is a great show. I'm loving this. We're back with Rob Patry live, Brad Henderson tonight. Now we're breaking all records this evening. This is an incredible show. Uh, Patrick, our producer, has access to some digital machine, and apparently the ratings tonight are through the roof. No doubt. This it, we're going to be we're going to get an award for this. So if you're watching tonight, you're watching history in the making. Uh, Brad tells me East Coast Awards. Yeah, e there must be East Coast Awards. I'm thinking awards. Juno Awards. I'm thinking uh, Emmy in the States. I'm even thinking Academy Awards. That's a really a, I, I, a long shot, but this is one of the best. And it's all due to you. I don't know. I don't you know. are like a magnet. The Dr. Phil impression, though. I, well, I, I, I don't know. I was, I, I I was know. A, yeah. You know what? We're going to get our own show. I am. Potentially. Patrick, yeah. write that down, would you? Put that down on the on the to do list. Probably radio. Give Brad and Rob no two good looking guys like us. I'm a six out of ten. 
at best. You, you know what? You're a 10 out of 10, my friend. You're, you're being hard on yourself. <laughs> All right. So now, you know, and I was, and another thought. You know, things pop in my mind. Just, uh -oh. uh, uh, it's only May. There's a lot of summer. <laughs> we haven't even hit summer yet. That's correct. I bet you there's a lot of stuff going on in town. Give us a list. There, there is a, a lot of things. So uh, normally you, you look at this past weekend, Paddle Fest, and you think it's the, uh, the weekend that kicks off summer. Uh, but the town-wide uh, yard sale was the week before, and the amount of cars that were in town was unbelievable. And what I was surprised to hear is the businesses downtown, people weren't just looking at yard sales. People were going in shops downtown, and a lot of them had almost record days, not just for this time of year, record days. Well, yeah, because your people that are coming in to look at at the yard stuff are saying, well, you know what, I want to get a bite to eat. I want to, oh, there's a store right here that's open that's selling stuff. Let's go in there and check it out. For sure. So it's, again, you know, it's just simple marketing, small town, fantastic idea. Reoccurring events yeah. that build up, right? Yeah. So, uh, but as far as we talked already about July 1st weekend in St. Andrews, but the next big one that's coming up that jumps to oh! line. I just thought of something. Go I got to ask you. Go for it. Sorry to interrupt, but I do it all the time. Last year, we, there was a chowder tasting thing. When's that coming that's up? That's where I'm going. That's exactly okay. See, right I, here. I read your mind. Perfect. So uh, normally uh, what would be happening this coming weekend is Bay of Fundy Seafood Week, but it's merged with another weekend known as Outrageous, which is about art. So now we have art, culture, and food to make a nice early uh, week in, uh, in St. Andrews. So that'll be June 9th, 10th, and 11th, and it's loaded with activity. On uh, It, it kind of kicks off on the, uh, the Friday night, there's uh, a number of different restaurants that are having seafood themed uh, menus. I know the Ross Mount's doing one, the Algonquin's doing. At Kingsbury Garden, we have a tapas night. So it's shared plates. Uh, it's, it's obviously at a reduced cost because it's a tapas type smaller portion. Uh, and what we'll do is be actually sampling some of the best uh, seafood that the Bay has to offer. Uh, from there, uh, on the Saturday, it is loaded on, on the 10th, loaded with activities. Uh, there is the seafood uh, chowder competition, which tickets are available at artandseafest.com, uh, where people can actually purchase a ticket and go to all the different places and try seafood, little samples. Uh, there's an event called Lobster Roll Palooza, where there is, I, I don't even know how many feet it is, like a six foot lobster roll downtown, where you can buy portions in, in sample. Uh, and then the, the, big, uh, the big headliner is again at, at Kingsbury Garden. It's a free day to the public. Kingsbury Garden is completely free. It's called Outrageous. And what we have is the St. Andrews Farmer's Market is in the garden going down that memory lane. Uh, and this year we have an exciting new partner. Uh, the largest busker festival in New Brunswick is in St. John. It's Buskers on the Bay and they are bringing all their performers down to St. Andrews to Kingsbury Garden between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. to have busker shows all day. You know what, the, okay, I guess this is too much. This is there's more. Too, there's, oh, there's too much going on. There's like, more, yeah. This is crazy. That evening there is an event uh, where you can purchase tickets for uh, Maritime Sea Fest dinner where it starts in the Rose Garden at Kingsbury where uh, True North Salmon has donated uh, some appetizers from, uh, there's oysters as well. From there it switches into the tent where the Backyard Devils, which is an East Coast Music Award uh, nominee uh, band, will be playing in the tent with mussels, lobster, dessert. Uh, so again, those tickets are available at artandseafest.com and we're also doing a toast to celebrate the 20th season at Kingsbury as part of that and providing a complimentary glass of champagne. Uh, and then the last thing uh, that people uh, can go on and purchase tickets is, is on the Sunday, we're having something called the Most Amazing Race, where the proceeds will be going to the St. Andrews Food Bank. People can go, teams of two, and r race around town and get clues for a chance to, uh, to win the Most Amazing Race in St. Andrews. And again, all the proceeds for that go directly to the St. Andrews Food Bank. Well, man, that, that's, a, that's a lot of stuff. That's a, it'll be an action pack. Now, weekend. I will... I'll tell the folks at home, last year we had an opportunity to go to the, um, the chowder tasting and the, on that particular day they had the big uh, lobster roll. And I think I was like 37 feet, is that pot, is that 37, 50 feet, I don't know, it was big. Length of the wharf. Length of the wharf. <laughs> and um, we had a chance to try uh, half a dozen chowders around town. 
you go, we, and we bought our tickets ahead of time. I don't even remember. My wife does that. Because I'm like an airhead, a, a complete space cadet. I bet you haven't heard that term in a while. I would never say that about you, no. even though you did make fun of me earlier. I, I know, and, and I deserve that. But she takes care of that type of thing. She got us tickets for this chowder tasting. It was beautiful. The food was fantastic. The, the chowders were great. Um, you go out there and uh, the people cooking it are serving you and, and telling you about the different types of chowders. And we went around town and uh, you could buy a, a slice of the, um, of the lobster roll. And, you know, we walked by there and I said, well, you know, we'll go, do, we'll go grab another chowder. We'll come back and get another piece because there was still another, what did I say, 80 feet of, of lobster roll. It's getting bigger. We yeah. come back and it's all gone. Everything was gone. It just in a matter of minutes, it had all sold out. And what I love about all these things, and again, you take it very nonchalantly, but almost everything's going to some sort of charity. Everything's going out to helping people. Uh, we had the same thing last week. We we're at Flavors. They're helping charities locally. The food bank, SPCA. What a great town. Bo I, 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 what a great county. Uh, is it Charlotte County? I can say county. You, you can say What a county. great county. Yep. I mean, people here are so wonderful to those in need. And everybody has got that on their mind when they're out there having fun, having a good time, sharing in these things that we're so fortunate to have. It is. And, and a lot of these events, like people think of, of St. Andrews as a as a community that's busy in July and August, but all these events that we're talking about, they're, they're May, they're June, and then you get even into uh, Indulge Festival, which is in October, all the shoulder seasons are action-packed, and that's why, as these events grow, we're seeing the numbers, because there really isn't a bad weekend uh, between May and October to come to St. Andrews by the Sea and experience, because most times there's a special event going on to help you celebrate and have that authentic experience. And for that matter, even in the winter now, some of the programming the Algonquin Resort's doing, they have uh, monthly comedy with Yuck Yucks, they have uh, different, uh, actually, food events. Uh, really, people say, is there anything to do in St. Andrews in the winter? And, and the answer to that is there certainly is as well. It, uh, the community is very lively, and uh, there is a lot of events, and the heart of a lot of them is around charity, and people respond to it by buying tickets. Yeah, and uh, same thing in St. Stephen. We, you know, um, in town, there's always things going on. And as somebody who hasn't grown up here, it 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 behooves me how wonderful the people are here, and how um, people pull together. And again, you know, these wonderful events that are going on constantly, the music and. It's yeah, just the paddle fest and, and the celebrities that are coming out and the musicians and playing. And uh, there's always something going on. And I know this is Canada 150, but Canada 151 is going to be great. And 152, and, you know, and I plan on living to Canada 200. I don't know about yourself. I hope uh, to. Yeah. But I, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm taking sort of different potions and things to, to, <laughs> to live forever. Yeah. You were sick, though, right? I was. You but you know what? Relation, I, well, it could be. <laughs> but you know what? I lost a lot of weight. But the good thing is I'm going to put it all back on this summer, <laughs> coming and just eating all this stuff. Now, something clicked in. You said that at... Uh, Kingsbury Garden, you're going to have a day where everybody can come in and not have to pay. It's a free day. June 10th. Now, I've got season's tickets, yep. as you know. Do I get a refund because of that? <laughs> For the day. For the day. They, they figure out your can amount you, of time. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, but there is, a, there is a lot of events that, because you have a season membership, that you don't have to pay. Okay. Uh, in particular, one that jumps out at me, it's October 8th, is uh, we have Charlotte County Pumpkin Festival. Pumpkin Festival. Where, as a member, you can actually come in and pick up your, uh, for a family membership, two free pumpkins to take home. Lovely. Yeah, so you come and experience Yeah, Here's something I'm gonna throw out, and, and again, Patrick, write this down. Um, and I'm gonna offer this as, a, you know, a CHCO sort of contest, maybe carve a pumpkin that looks like Rob Patry. Oh. And, um, that'd be a piece of art. It would be. It would be. And yeah. uh, I think that'd be a lot of fun. But we don't wanna even think about October. 
because we're only in May. Too, too much know, we're, This is our long weekend. We'll do one later about October. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Okay, so we got about five minutes left in the show. If anybody, we've had a lot of calls tonight, but if anybody else wants to call in, it's one 529 8826 we're with Brad Henderson here, who's been a marvelous guest. I'm going to have you back again soon back. because, boy, this was a lot of fun. It's a lot of you fun. Know, I have great guests on all the time, but you, you might be, no, you're in the top seven anyway, top, I'd say. Top seven. Top seven. Top seven this month. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, you know, because, you know, if I say that you're number six, you know, the guy who's number well, five. You're talking about Mayor McEachern then, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. And, and, and Alice. Close. And, and he was good. He was good. And you know what? I'll, get, I'll tell people, I'll give it a little hint. He might be coming on again soon. And uh, that's just a little hint. And do you know his daughter, lovely daughter Emily, correct. works at Kingsbury. That's correct. I saw her yesterday. That's, that, that is correct. So Emily does work uh, in the garden. Uh, Kingsbury Garden employs almost 60 people uh, during peak You're season kidding. during the summertime. Yeah, between the actual garden uh, itself and our, and our cafe, uh, there's, there's year-round staff that we do have, but uh, like someone like Emily that's planning to go off to university, we have a lot of students as well that come for the summertime. So uh, the, if you look at Kingsbury Garden and, and how it started and what the, the motivation behind it was is uh, Mrs. Lucinda Flamer, Mr. John Flamer, uh, it was actually uh, Mrs. Flamer's family estate, and she donated it to the community uh, and invested in it so the community could come together and enjoy her family estate and property. And the other main reason behind it was to create employment in rural New Brunswick. And uh, uh, every year, to be honest with you, we're adding more staff because we're growing and we have more offerings. And uh, it's kind of exciting to see what's next. We have uh, next door uh, a building called Kingsbury International Residence for the Arts. It was purchased last year. It'll be its first year that it's opening. We have 15 artists coming, uh, not only from within New Brunswick, within Canada, but international uh, artists coming as well. And they'll all be coming for a one month period to practice different art forms in St. Andrews. And uh, there'll be a lot of community interaction where people can meet the artists. At the end of it, they'll be doing a little presentation to say what they did. And, and the art forms do vary. Um, one individual is gonna be doing documentaries and trying to document a story on St. Andrews while they're, while they're here. So it'll be exciting to see. There's more announcements to come, but um, it, it, as we expand that, we have more employees over there now. And uh, it's exciting to see what's next, because Kingsbury, uh, we just expanded our patio. We just renovated our kitchen. There's always something on the go there. Um, and we're going to hear more about it in a couple of weeks when Chef Alex Hahn is going to be on the show. And I'm really excited about that. And we've, he'll be coming over to the CHCO kitchen. Or we've got a new nickname for it. You're going to love this. Oh, this is because you're a marketing guy. I, I am a marketing guy. And I know guy, you've yeah. got it. Okay, the, the, it's Rob's Kitchen. Ooh. What do you think of that? I, I don't know. You don't, you don't like I don't it? Know. I don't know. Okay, well, you come up with a better a better name because yeah. you've got that that savvy, that, yeah, that you know, you, you get enough. And now, of course, you've been on my show. You have a better, clearer understanding. It. But we're going to have Chef Han on. I'm hoping that we can uh, uh, get him to make us a little something. I love to help the chefs. The chefs love me. I've been there two and a half years, and he'll present a new dish every week. It's yeah. amazing where he, the creativity that he comes behind and I look forward to seeing the show. Well, well what, like I said, what we had uh, yesterday was just fantastic. Okay, so I think we're almost out of time. Um, and I always like at the end of the show to say to the folks out there, and well, I don't always like to say this, but I like to say something about, about our guest, which is Brad, and Kingsbury Garden, please, if you haven't been there, or if you haven't been there lately, check it out. It is the most beautiful garden I've ever seen. The folks there are ever so nice. The food is fantastic. I got a pass there uh, for my wife and I, and we are so looking forward to, to spending a lot of great times there. And I encourage you to do the same because it is a beautiful, beautiful garden. And if you haven't seen it, get out there, check it out. This is a wonderful, incredible, magical place. We are so lucky to have a garden like this in the area. There aren't that many gardens like this in Canada. You know, probably a handful. And there's one right here in your backyard. So support Kingsbury Garden. Um, Brad Henderson 
is doing an, an amazing job, both as deputy mayor and as director of sales at the garden. So go out there. Let's show our support. Thank you for watching the show. I hope you had as good a time as I did. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Good night.